Okay, guys, I'm here for the final edition of the W2K18 confirmation list, where I look at the W2K18 roster. It is it, Yesterday was WWE 2K18 DLC day, and today we got the confirmation of what will officially be the DLC for W2K18, so I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Uh, I will also try, before the end of the night, to have part... Uh, episode 10 of Smacking the Roster Down Up, which will be SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. Uh, but if I don't get that up today, I will get it up tomorrow, and I'll try to get back on a daily upload schedule for that. Uh, but I have, I'm kind of busy Friday, so it could be a little bit iffy there. Uh, but, so, what's the DLC for 2K18? Well, there's the Accelerator, which does what it's always done, unlock everything from the beginning. Uh, now, I'm an old-school guy traditionally, meaning that I do like to work my unlockables, but it did get a tad bit tedious last year since, you know, no showcase and whatnot. Uh, so, there is that. Uh, uh, now, this included in the season pass, and but if you want it separately, it's $4.99. Uh, there, then, for the first part-time ever in the season pass is the My Player Kickstarter. Which does what it's always done. And unlocks clothing now, too, for uh, my career. Uh, it's included in Season Pass for the first time, but separately it's $9.99. Uh, I hope that my career is not boring and repetitive like it was last year. I stopped playing my career after a while because I kept, place I kept facing Dolph Ziggler, Finn Balor, or Baron Blade every month, every day, every show. And, like, that got old real quick. Because you never ranked up. You never got to the point where you could even get a championship. Or even if you did, you had to be going for quite a daggone while and all that. See, at least in W2K16, you could win a title on the main roster in my career remotely quickly by just attacking a champion and getting into a rivalry with them. So it's kind of easy at that. Uh, so now on to the big meat of the, D of the Season Pass announcement. And that is what are the other packs in the DLC. Well, there is, of course, the new Moose Pack, which is always here. It sells for three ninety nine separately, but it is in the uh, it is a part of the um, season pass. They didn't specify how many new moves it is. I'm going to guess it's about thirty. That's what it was last year. It features uh, the tiebreaker made by anyway, Ty Lunger, which I'm assuming is his new version of it, the face first version, and not the one that's already in Juke eighteen. I'm assuming that, because I know there's a version of it already in 2K17. I'm assuming this is the new version where he puts him face first across from me. I'm assuming that's what this that is. What this is. Uh, Cash's Ono's cla Crash Landing, which I'm pretty sure has been in games before, but it might be reanimated. Uh, the, de the Pump Handle WLA Driver for Aikum. And the Swinging Sleeper Slam made famous, famous by Diamond Dallas Page. Now, why the... Now, this is something they tend to always do. They put these superstars in the game, but yet they don't put all their moves in. And it, so they can make one or two DLC for that particular game. I don't, I don't get that. If you're going to put the superstar in, give them every move they have at the start. But then again, since 2K has put so many indie moves in over the past few years, they probably don't have that many left to put in, so withholding moves seems like something they do. Uh, it is what it is. So then we have the NXT Generation Pack, which is included in the season pass, but separately it's $9.99. It includes five wrestlers. It includes Drew McIntyre, Aleister Black, Ruby Riot. Elias, or Elias Samson, however you want to call him, and Lars Sullivan, who was a shock because all I know about Lars Sullivan is that he's in NXT and he is apparently, and he can't get along with a tag team partner. Uh, so, yeah. That was kind of weird. Uh, that's an interesting pack, though. Every person in that pack I actually expected to be DLC in a way. So... Well, minus Lars Sullivan, I actually didn't think he'd be DLC. If anything, I thought Andrade Almas would be DLC over him. Uh, 
And then we get the final DLC pack, the Enduring Icons pack. Basically the equivalent of a Legends pack, but since two of the members of the pack are not technically under Legends contracts, they can't call it the a Legends pack. But it's the Hardy Boys, Beth Phoenix, and the Rock and Roll Express. Now, Beth Phoenix, the Rock and Roll Express, and the Hardys, I knew would all be DLC. Because the Hardys came back at WrestleMania and were under contract to Ring of Honor and TNA for the entire development of this game for when the main roster would be announced. Uh, Beth Phoenix and Honorable Express, I knew would be DLC because that's generally how it goes at the Hall of Fame. If you go into the Hall of Fame then one year, then you're DLC for the next game. So it's a guarantee whoever goes in the Hall of Fame next year that they will be DLC in 2K19. That's just the way it, that's the trajectory. That's the trajectory. <laughs> that's trajectory now. Uh, I will say it's good to have Beth Phoenix and the Hardys back in the WWE game. The Hardys, and I'll probably get into this more when I go into smacking the roster down, the Hardys have not actually been in the game together since SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. So, and I think the last time they would have been a default tag team would have been SmackDown vs. Raw, uh, SmackDown Shut Your Mouth, I think, because I don't think they're a default team in uh, 2008. I don't think. I could be wrong, though. So, is this good DLC? Well, okay, the DLC as a whole is good. It's, you know, it's very, it's actually, arguably, the best DLC we've actually ever had. Now, if you compare it to last year, sure, you're losing potentially 10 wrestlers. But if you think about it, if the Hall of Fame pack showcase didn't exist, what 2K giving you is what you would have gotten last year. 10 wrestlers divided into two five person, two wrestler packs. Two five wrestler packs. If you if the Hall of Fame showcase didn't exist, and anyway, if you only want to count unique characters that Hall of Fame showcase gave you, it was only ten anyway. Last year it was Godfather, Papa Shango, who yeah okay play by the same guy, but is a different character. Uh, Ivory, Jacqueline, the three members of the Five Three Birds, the two Von Air er and uh, the uh, and the two Von Erics. So that. And Albert. Plus, they gave you four arenas. So, it didn't really... Because everyone else that was in the Hall of Fame showcase last year was already on disc anyway. So, it didn't really add too much. Uh, now, let's talk about some omissions about the LC, and specifically Andrade Almas. Andrade Almas is the weirdest exclusion to me, because... Virtually the entire NXT roster that is not already, that was not already in 2K17 or anything like that, he kind of predates all of them. The only one he does not predate is the Offers of Pain. He technically, and Sawyer Fulton, but as a member of Sanity, uh, he even predates that. He predates all of Sanity, even though technically Sanity has uh, Eric Young, he doesn't predate, but Eric Young just went away for a little bit. Uh, he predates Bobby Roode. In fact, he was Bobby Roode's first opponent in NXT on a TakeOver show. Uh, he predates Roderick Strong, Cassius Ono, when he made his return, Ruby Riot, Lars Sullivan. He predates every single person in NXT, minus the Offers of Pain. They did be before he did. So... I think, actually, I think they debuted the same day he did, or I think they debuted the same takeover he did, so he, they came in exactly the same time he did, so it's kind of weird, but I have heard a rumor that he didn't want to be in the game, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard, uh, if it, if that's true, then, okay, I didn't know anyone would have, I didn't know anyone would have that kind of clout, uh, the, the UK guys, Tyler Bate, Pete Dunn, and all of them, uh, it would have been nice to have them in the game, but given that they're not under WWE contract, the WWE is most likely not going to put people not under contract in the game. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, but what about Fred Durst and uh, Just Bring It and Mike Tyson in W13? Well, technically Mike Tyson would have been under some kind of a marketing slash legends deal given the Hall of Fame in 2012. Same thing with Schwarzenegger and... Uh, 2K15, and Fred Durst was just there, so, for Roland to be in the song. Uh, generally, they don't put anyone not under contract in, of some fashion, in games. Uh, so there's that. And the biggest, uh, and also, I think the biggest thing that makes a lot of people upset is the 205 Live crew that's missing. 
they gave you technically nine of the division as it is. It's only missing five wrestlers anyway. It's only missing five wrestlers. Uh, and that's Lindsay Dorado, Mustafa Ali, Tony Nese, Drew Gulak, and Ari Adivari. The problem about that is Tony Nese has been the only one featured regularly on two, on uh, 205 Live. And the rest of them are just are periodically not featured enough. And on top of that, statistically, 205 Live is not a very well, is not a watch show on the WWE Network too much. So, it's not a pri- so I don't think it's a prerogative. So, I don't really think WWE considers them a priority. I really, so I don't really think the WWE thought that was a priority. But, counting Enzo Amore, they, you can't, they gave you a 10, and you can always move Kalisto and Sin Cara into the division. So, you can have plenty of cruiserweights around there. Uh, the ones that made the game are the ones I expected to make the game. Minus Noam Dar, just because I didn't think he'd make it. So, it's interesting he made it. I didn't expect Grant Manalik to make it either. But, I expected TJ Perkins, Brian Kendrick, uh, Cedric Alexander, Rich Swan, Neville, and Akira Dazal, and Jack Gallagher to make it. I didn't expect Grant Manalik's there because, well, he was running up the Cruiserweight Classic, more than likely. Uh, and, of course, there's also NXT people like Liv Morgan and people, but Liv Morgan I have not seen on NXT in anything I watch. Now, I don't watch it every week, so she probably should have shown up here and there, but I've seen enough of it, and every NXT I've seen, I've seen her on one episode of NXT. One. That's all I've seen of her in about four, in about three years having the WWE Network. So, I've only seen her, like, one time. She hasn't been on a takeover, not that that matters. Ours all hasn't been on a takeover yet, but... Uh, I generally believe that with the XT people, you've got to be featured heavily there to have any chance of getting into the game. So, if they start pushing her in an XT, then she'll probably be there. Uh, if they start pushing her in an XT. And she's featured more. That's my view on it. Uh, now, do I think the season pass is worth $30? Uh, not really. Uh, I think it was maybe $20 I'd be fi uh, fine of that. Uh, but I will say, technically, you are saving $5 if you get the season pass, because if you buy this all separately, it's about, I think, 35 to 40 I think, if you add all that up. Uh, and you don't, you don't need to include tax, because PSN doesn't, inv uh, does not include, uh, PXN doesn't tax you, as far as I know. Uh, as far as I know. I, it's always charged exactly what it is on PSN, but I could be wrong, and maybe it does, but, uh, it's about, I think, 35 to $40 normally, so. I think it's good DLC. It's virtually every, it's virtually a lot of people that people wanted and would play as. Me, I play as a lot of different people. I, I don't mind all the legends being in the game. Do I wish we'd get more? Sure. Uh, more new ones, sure, but I do play as every one of them. I can find use for most of them. This game, I just can't find use for Larry Sabisco by himself or Hasui Fujinami, but I can find uses for everybody else, including the Rock and Roll Express. See, Legends are in this game for dream matches. Okay, so I'm so I'm fine with the DLC. It could have been better. There could have been more people, but a 205 Live pack by itself would not have sold it by its if you're on buying the season pass casual people don't know who the 205 live crew is so they probably wouldn't care uh because most of the most of those five guys are not on tv frequently so uh so that's it that's my thoughts of the wk18 season pass and dlc it'll just be the dlc for the purpose of the video so this will be in the wd 2k18 confirmation list playlist if you like this video like button down there subscribe button down there and thank you for watching bye